proper setup of the weld box begins with checking the integrity of the unit itself. Here we see a typical chuck style three roll weld box. The internal components of the chuck needs to be inspected, cleaned and lubricated. The clevises that hold all the weld rolls, they need to be inspected for the bushings, reference locations that the weld roll pins are going to have. Make sure all that is in good condition. The weld roll pins themselves, inspect them. You get some that are worn, been ground on. These need to be replaced with new weld roll pins. Check the weld rolls. If they have sealed bearings, make sure that the sealed bearing has the shield removed on the inside so they can be greased. The shield wants to be on the outside only, removed on the inside. Bearings like these that are, have sealed bearings on weld rolls need to have a sleeve put between the center races. So when the bearings are pressed together and the pins are put together with the end caps and everything is pulled together tight on the inside race, we do not bind up the bearings. Once the bearings are assembled in the weld rolls, make sure that we put the proper weld roll in the proper location. On a three roll weld box, for example, the rolls will be designated as far as weld roll bottom, weld roll top, this side out, weld roll top, this side out. This flange wants to be on the top side where the bead is being forged so there's room and clearance for the bead to be forged properly. Installation of these rolls upside down will give a narrower clearance and will not allow enough room for the forged bead. As you install the weld roll shafts and the weld rolls in a three roll chuck style weld box like this, make sure that the pin has clearance between the scale as I'm shown here on the clevis so that when the washer is tightened up, it pulls the pin tight up against the reference bushing to align the weld rolls. Once we have the weld rolls all installed, we can now plug the weld box. Make yourself a plug that is the same size as the welded tube size on your setup chart and the radius on your weld rolls. Put the weld roll plug in the cluster of weld rolls and adjust in this case the three roll chuck until you feel resistance on the plug. Take a light and place it behind the weld box so that you can see the gap that you may have on the weld plug. Here you can see that there's a gap around the weld rolls as we are adjusting the weld box. Continue to adjust the weld box and the individual adjustment that you have on each clevis until you see no light between the radius of each of the three weld rolls and the setup plug. When you use a setup plug to set up a weld box, whether it's three roll, four roll, five roll, you're taking up all the backlash that's present in the scroll, the individual lead screws, and replicating the pressure we'll have once we thread the material into the mill and start to create a weld. Setting up weld rolls by gap only in a feeder gauge doesn't take up the backlash that we're talking about. And once the material gets pushed in here, the gap that you have between each weld roll will be wider you're going to need to readjust. It'll take a lot more setup time. Now you can check the weld gap between each of the three weld rolls and compare it to the setup chart and make sure those are all equal as well. Those should be equal. Radius on the weld plug should be equal. You're ready to thread the mill.